Russian soldiers simply had enough. They lay down their weapons and they refused to fight in Kherson region. At the same time, Ukrainians were able to destroy a major think tank, the major command center of the Z army also in the southern region. But more about all of this in just a couple of minutes. What's up investors? It's the Russian dude. And let's get straight to the point and talk about some ridiculous Russian propaganda. Woo! Today, today, today we have this video from the Red Square in Moscow, where just some couple teenage, I guess, or just women TikTokers, they decided to film some videos of listening to extremely Russian music, I'm rich, I'm eating caviar, and she recorded the video to show her alleged wealth. So she was eating a lot of red caviar on the Red Square. Just to be later approached by the Russian policeman, said stop filming, you are, guess what, <laughs> under arrest. And just, I mean, imagine yourself, you are walking around the streets and, I don't know, eating McDonald's, just taking some pictures of the surrounding nature or whatever, and then you're approached by the policeman, and he says, come with me. You are asking, where do we need to go, Mr. Policeman? And the guy says, of course, straight to jail. You're asking, but what did I do? Why do I need to go to jail? The policeman replies, you are protesting against Putin and Russia. And you're like, but I'm, I'm, I'm just eating McDonald's on the street. How is this related? And to be replied, doesn't matter. I don't care. You are going to jail. So yes, in Russia, you do not go to jail. The jail comes for you. But okay, now let's get serious and let me give you one bad and one good news about Russian-Ukrainian war. Then we're gonna go to the east, where recently there has been a lot of combat footage. And then we'll finalize everything in the south, where Ukrainians were able to destroy a major command center of Russians. And the soldiers simply started to refuse to fight and lay down their weapons. And so yes, to begin with the bad news, Unfortunately, at this very moment, Ukrainians are producing 50,000 drones every single month, which you might think is a very big number, and it is. But when you hear the Russian numbers, which are six times higher, at least, this is when it gets really scary. And obviously, Ukraine is a way smaller country, but it is their plan to catch up with Russians and be at least at the 50% capacity and then to increase it even further. But the good news is, is that the European countries finally agreed on the 50 billion euros support package to Ukraine over the next four years. And so yes, now as promised, let's quickly go to the east of Ukraine, where Ukrainians were able to destroy a very important logistic route of Russians far behind the front lines. And then I'll give you an update from the south of Ukraine, which is also extremely important. But first of all, guys, if you do appreciate this style of daily updates, and if you want to help my work and spread the news, can you please simply like this video and subscribe to my, to my channel. That's as much as I ask you to do. Thank you so much. You can also follow me on Instagram. I'm planning a travel in the near future, so you can just follow me along. The link is down below. And so yes, before we go to the east of Ukraine, let's talk about this extremely important logistic route of Russians, which has been destroyed by Ukrainian special services. They already acknowledged it. And what I'm talking about here is this route, is this railroad located in Buryatia region, which Russians allegedly were using to bring supplies and reinforcements all the way from the far east of Russia, including also China and potentially even North Korea. And I mean, what was the response of Russians? Unfortunately, something what they're pretty used to do. They destroyed, literally targeted, a civilian neighborhood in Pakrovsky, located in Donetsk region, and literally obliterated a civilian infrastructure, the civilian building. Unfortunately, there are civilian casualties and injured. And in order for this attack for Russians to be so-called successful, they launched six S-300 missiles in a row. So this was not an accident. And just in general, speaking about the Ukrainian air defense, Russians launched 20 Shahid drones and Ukrainians were able to intercept 14 of them. And also Russians launched 8 S-300 missiles and Ukrainians, unfortunately, looks like were only able to intercept two of them. 
Then we, as always, refer to the report by the Institute for the Study of War, which claims that Russians continue their offensive along Kupiansk Svatve Krimina front line with no reported success in the last 24 hours. And Ukrainians, on the other hand, they released this video of the compilation of the destruction of the Russian military vehicles, weapons and equipment. Next we have another video of Ukrainians using a drone and they are able to destroy a Russian manpad called Strela. And get ready, because today we will have a lot of combat footage. For example, in this next one, Ukrainians are destroying a Russian air defense system called Buk M1. And then yet another Tor air defense system of Russians has also been successfully destroyed by Ukrainians. And ultimately, believe it or not, another Buk M2 air defense system of Russians has been destroyed by Ukrainians, most likely in the east as well. As you can see, guys, today I have way more than usual number of photos and videos from Russian-Ukrainian war, but unfortunately, in order for my videos not to get taken down by YouTube, I have to censor them, as always. But if you want to see fully uncensored episodes and these full versions of this footage, please go ahead and check my Patreon. This is also the best way to support my work, starting only as little as $4 for the entire month and you unlock everything, and the link will be down below. Thank you so much. And as we go to the actual Ukrainian front lines, there has not been that much advancement neither by Ukrainians nor Russians recently, but Russians did report that they were able to recapture Khromove, which is not yet confirmed by this map, and Ukrainians had to retreat. And so yes, now let's switch our attention quickly to the south of Ukraine. And while we're going there, let's make a quick stop in Krivoy Rog, where Russians reportedly used their Lancet drone to destroy a Ukrainian fighter jet Su-25. But according to many dominantly information on the internet, this was a fake decoy, this was not a real plane. This information is not yet, though, however, 100% confirmed. But what is true? is that Ukrainians were able to destroy another heavy flamethrower of Russians along southern front lines called Solnsepyok. And the interesting thing here is that Russians almost ran out of this heavy machinery, which was relatively dominant in the beginning of the war, and now Russians have very few of them left. But wait, there is more. Believe it or not, another book air defense system of Russians has been destroyed by Ukrainians along the southern front lines. As we go closer to Kherson region, Ukrainians reportedly were able to destroy a drone operator location of Russians next to Krynki and also a small assault group. And besides that, looks like even more Ukrainian marines started to cross Dnipro river, now reaching the total number next to Krynki to 3 to 400 people. And they even were able to recapture some small territory around this settlement. But most important news of the last several days, which in reality actually happened in the beginning of November, but it just kinda became known recently, is that in the very first days of November, Ukrainians were able to destroy a major command center in the south, located in Rabat Spit in Strelkova settlement. This place has been a major think tank of the Russian southern forces, and they were responsible for a lot of decision-making processes in Kherson and in the Zaporozhye directions. Also, whenever something was happening on the border with Crimea, they were also involved. And as a result of this attack, at least three high-ranking Russian officers were eliminated. Specifically, Colonel Vadim Dobrekov, Colonel Alexander Galkin and Colonel Alexei Koblov. And obviously, besides officers, there were numerous losses among the Russian regular forces. But it is not over yet. Because also recently, several days ago, in Kherson region, the seventh highest military official of Russia, Major General Vladimir Zavatsky, he was also eliminated in Kherson region. And reasons for this vary. Some people think that this was a direct elimination by Ukrainians. Others think that he might have caught up with a Russian mine. He was driving in an armored vehicle, did not notice it and there was basically a very loud noises. And I mean, now it all makes sense. 
No wonder Russians were not doing anything significant the entire November. The orders were chaotic and did not make sense. And Russian regular soldiers, they were always very confused, demoralized and they simply did not want to fight. Exactly what we've been talking about in the last my several videos. And the reason for this, as you might have guessed, it is because the top military leadership was, to say the least, unavailable. So the orders that officers on spot were making were absolutely not coordinated with other nearby units and formations. Pretty much every man was for himself. And ultimately, this is what was the result of all of this. Now we're referring to once again the report by the Institute for the Study of War, which mentions and confirms something I mentioned three minutes ago. That yes, Ukrainians continue to cross the Dnipro River and there's a big concentration of Ukrainians, three to four hundred soldiers around Krynki. But Russians, soldiers, Russian soldiers, they decided to act differently. And what I mean by that is that the morale of the Russian forces is lower than never before, in the south at least. And they simply refuse now to follow the orders of their military officers and leadership. Simply because there are no clear objectives. There is no intelligence and reconnaissance. They are going in these attacks pretty much blinded. They do not know where Ukrainians, there is no drone, there is nothing. And the officers are literally sending them on suicide missions. That is why more and more Russian soldiers, they refuse to fight in Kherson region at least, and they simply lay down their weapons. They say, we are big in numbers, you're just one or two officers, what can you do to us? If you want to fight, go ahead and do it yourself. And the officer realizes himself that, I mean, yeah, I mean, where would I go? We don't know anything about our enemy. So that's the, that's the situation that's happening right now in the south. And you know what, to make it even more ridiculous, whenever Russian officers in Kherson region, they request the maps with the mine locations exactly in their territory, so at least they can send their soldiers, their infantry trying to avoid these minefields. These maps with the mines are supposedly top secret and classified <laughs> within the Russian military. So basically, even their own generals, they are not able to send their own officers. The minefields, which is just completely already just absurd. I mean, this is just absurd. Regular soldiers, they need to know where the mines so they don't step on them. Russian officers request these maps from the Ministry of Defense of Russia, and the Ministry of Defense of Russia replies they are heavily classified. I mean, who knows, maybe you can be Ukrainian, right? We will not send them to you. But you go ahead and attack anyways, otherwise you'll go to jail. So with this attitude, it is no wonder that more and more Russian soldiers refuse to fight. And so yes, guys, please let me know in the comments what do you think about this circus within the Russian military. And also, if you once again want to help me with my work, simply please subscribe to my channel. It only takes one click and you'll continue to receive these daily news updates. Thank you so much, patrons, for your support and see you tomorrow.